This video will be a quick refresher of the properties of logarithms and the properties of exponents. We'll start with the product property, which in exponents says that a to the power of n times a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n plus m. So an example of this would be something like 3 squared plus 3 to the 4th would equal 3 to the 2 plus 4, which is 6. In logarithms, it says the log base b of x times y is equal to the log base b of x plus the log base b of y. So with numbers, this would look something like the log of 2x is equal to the log of 2 plus the log of x. And that's the product property. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the quotient property, which for exponents says that a to the power of n divided by a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n minus m. With numbers, this would be something like 4 to the power of 5 divided by 4 to the power of 2 equals 4 to the power of 5 minus 2, which is 3. In logarithms, this one says that the log base b of x divided by y equals the log base b of x minus the log base b of y. With numbers, this would be something like the log base 3 of 5 6 is equal to the log base 3 of 5 minus the log base 3 of 6. And that's the quotient property. Now we can take a look at the power of a product and a power of a quotient property. Um, these are ones that we only typically look at in exponent form. For the power of a product, it's a times b to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n times b to the power of n. So really all that's happening in this example is that you are distributing the power. If we were to look at this with numbers, it would be something like 3 times 4 squared would equal 3 squared times 4 squared, or 9 times 16, or 144. Now with the quotient property, it's pretty much the uh, power of a quotient property, it's pretty much the same thing. It says if you have a divided by b, all being raised to the power of n, that's the same thing as a to the power of n divided by b to the power of n. So again, with numbers, this would be something like uh, 3 fourths squared equals 3 squared over 4 squared, which would be 9 sixteenths, which can't reduce, so we would leave it as a fraction. And that's the power of a product and the power of a quotient property. All right, and now we're going to look at power of a power and negative powers. Um, so power of a power says that if you have some number a to the power of n being raised to another power of m, that that equals a to the n times m. So you just multiply your exponents. Now with numbers, this would be something like 4 cubed uh, uh, to the 4th power, which would equal 4 to the 12th, because you're taking the 3 times the 4. With negative powers, there's really 
two parts that you need to know. Um, if you have a to the negative n, that's equal to 1 over a to the positive n. So basically you're making it a reciprocal with a positive exponent instead of a negative exponent. The other half of this is if you have a over b all being raised to the negative n, you can flip the fraction to be b over a and raise that to the power of n. Uh, and so the power becomes positive again. Now remember, if you have it in the numerator, like in this case, this is really a to the negative n over 1, um, you move it to the denominator. You could have something like 1 over a to the negative n, which would then be the same thing as a to the positive n. So remember, you can also move it out of the denominator into the numerator of a fraction by flipping the sign of the exponent. The sign of a, whatever the base is, doesn't change. That's a common mistake I've been seeing on a lot of quizzes, is that when you have a number like negative 4 squared, you guys want to write it as 1 over 4 squared, and that's not the same thing. It's when the exponent, the power, um, this part up here is negative, that you can make it, um, that you can put into the denominator and make it positive, not when the base is po uh, negative. So that's power over power property and negative powers. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the rational exponent property, which says that if you have x to the power of n divided by m, that that's the same thing as the mth root of x to the power of n. So with numbers, this would be something like 3 to the 2 thirds would be equal to the cubed root of x, or I'm sorry, of 3 squared. Right? And just to help, since I used two threes, this 3 here is becoming this 3, and the 2, oops, the 2 is right here. Right? Um, another example would be something like 4 to the 1 half, which would just be the square root, which remember, this 2 actually doesn't need to be written when it's a square root, so we just draw the radical sign. And then it'd be 4 to the first, which again, I don't have to write 1, so this is really just the square root of 4, which is actually 2. And so that's rational exponents. Alright, now that we're done with all the ones that we look at for exponents, we're going to look at the ones that we look at just for logs. Um, so definition of a logarithm says that if you have the log base b of a equals x, then that's the same exact thing as b to the power of x equals a. So with numbers, this would be something like the log base 3 of 243 equals 5 is the same thing as 3 to the 5th equals 243. And that's the definition of a logarithm. Now we're going to take a look at the power property for logarithms, which says that if you have the log base b of a to the power of n, that that's the same thing as n times the log base b of a. An example with numbers would be the log of 4 squared is equal to 2 times the log of 4. And just a reminder, when I write a log like this without a base down here, the base is actually 10, and we don't need to write it because that's the common base. So, that's the power property. And now we're going to look at the change of base, which says that if you have the log base b of a, that you can change this to the log base c of a divided by the log base c of b. c could be any number, so we could change it to the base of 8, we could change it to the base of e, we could change it to the base of 27, 
Um, typically, we change it to the base of 10 because, again, that's the common base, and it's what our calculators do. So if we had something like the log base 3 of 5, we could rewrite that as the log base 5 divided by the log base 3. So in that case, we have a base of 10. You could also write it, though, as the natural log of 5 divided by the natural log of 3, which would have the base of E, which is approximately 2.72. Um, you could even do the log base 4 of 5 divided by the log base 4 of 3. It doesn't matter what you put in the base, but again, uh, the common base with the base of 10 and the natural log with a base of E are both going to be the easiest because that's what our calculator is most familiar with. So that's the change of base. Thanks for watching today's video. Um, I hope I didn't forget any of them. If I did, leave me a comment and I'll add it in to the end of this video. Um, and sorry if I forgot one. Hope this was helpful.